Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mixner Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to do some advanced sky replacement inside of DaVinci Resolve 14. Now you could kind of do this in previous versions, but now with DaVinci Resolve 14 beta, and this particular feature is only available in the studio version. So if you've been thinking about getting it and you see this and you're like, hey, I want that, you know, here you go. Uh, if you don't feel like getting this, then you can do the same thing in Fusion or in After Effects or in basically any other actual compositor out there. But now it's in Resolve, and that is some actual factual match moving. So in Resolve, we've got our footage here, which is, I would say, comically flat. So we're going to go ahead and just contrast this bad boy up real quick. Get those. Get that. Okay. That looks, you know, whatever. Fine for now. The main part of this is to get this guy to have something interesting happening because you see bring this down there's there's nothing really going on there we've got all the detail there the only problem is that this guy just didn't have any detail that day so it's not a problem with overexposing the camera it's just that's that's what we were given so we're going to go and import some cloud footage here and you do this a special way so you're going to right click then go to add to media pool as matte and that was pretty special i think then we're going to go back into our color page. We're going to right click on this node, go to add mat, timeline mat, and then select the only one that we've got there. Disconnect that little thing. And now we've got our sky footage here. So Alt S, just add a little note after that. So we can do some corrections later on. And now we're going to go get into the, the crazy part of this thing. So in our open effects tab, we are going to scroll way down to resolve effects transform. And now we've got match move, which once again, I'm pretty sure it's only a resolve studio thing. So, you know, sorry. But you can drag this in as its own node, which is pretty great. So we've got our background input and our foreground input. It's just like you'd be in Fusion. So we're going to go ahead and drag our background in here, which is what we're going to track from. And then foreground, which is what we're going to apply the track to. And then we'll go ahead and give ourselves a little output here. And I see nothing's really changed. But we get these controls over here. So show controls for tracking. Great. Make sure that our FX overlay is available. And right now I've got this cropped. We're going to turn off our output blanking cool and now with sky replacement you want to be sure to use track points that are as far back as you can because if you're using foreground track points then your sky track is going to look all goofy so we're going to zoom in here and see this is a pretty not ideal situation because all of these trees are subject to you know moving but this is a short enough clip hopefully we'll be able to get by so there we'll say that's a good little point you just click to add a track point and now these are a little bit big for me and it's just a patch tracker so it's basically like after effects that same sort of thing so you've got your center point you've got your patch you're going to search for and then you've got your area you're going to search for your patch in if you don't know what any of that means just you know click on a point and you're good to go and make it smaller smaller will go faster bigger will be more accurate now let's scroll around i'm going to add a little more contrast to this just for now so we can see a little better what's going on and i don't know if that affects the processing or not it shouldn't if DaVinci Resolve operates it the way it says it does, but you can never be too sure. So hopefully these two tracking points are good. I'll be a little safer. I'll go with this spot here. And now we're going to go ahead and track backwards. Move back forward some and track forwards. Nice. And that's reasonably quick. We're going to also enable zoom and rotation. You can do that after the fact, which is pretty nice. Then we're going to go change our controls from tracking to positioning. And you see it gives us this little overlay right now. And we can turn our crop back on. So timeline output blanking 2.35 to 1. Cool. And then I'm going to change the canvas controls from corners, which, you know, was a corner pin thing to handles. So you can just basically define where you want. It's sort of like a puppet warp thing. It's a little bit goofy. So you see I put one there. You I can lock that point there and then you can add another one here and scale it up. So we'll call that good and you can sort of move things around. It's goofy, but it works. You know, then you get into stuff like that and that's too much tuna. So just two points there. That's pretty nice. And then we can go to compositing. And now you can see we've got our sky footage. Oop, we need to make it a little bigger. Hop back to positioning. Make this guy a little bigger. Hopefully that's better. Back to positioning, compositing, scrub through. In my experience, this is not not the fastest effect that DaVinci Resolve has. But, you know, I guess it's faster than round tripping. Maybe not.
But anyway, now we've got our sky footage moving along, so we can make some crazy nodes happen. So we're going to get hit Alt S with the match move selected, and then Alt L. So now I've got a new layer mixer node. Now we're going to delete this connection and connect it up top here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to key out the sky and then have this going to the foreground. So this will be laying on top of our sky image here. So to key out the sky, hit Shift H so we can see what we're doing really well and select the sky. That's looking fine enough. We will twiddle some things around after we invert this, we can see what we're doing. So bring this, it's looking good. That's looking good. That's looking good. Then we will go ahead and just blur it all to heck. And we've got a little halo happening around here, but we'll just blend that in. If you want to be a little bit more surgical, you can, you know, uh, reduce the in out ratio some, but I'm just going to leave that at zero. Bring the blur down a bit, but that should be good. Now if we hit Shift H again, we can see oh, our sky's back here, and now we can blend it in. So select our sky node, which is coming out of the match move, and now we just twiddle around our curves some. Now that is matching pretty well. You see there's still some softness around the tree, so I might even try and reduce my blur even more, just because it looks very sky replacey right now. So I'll see. Bring this way down. Yeah, that's looking nicer. A quick save. Now that's not looking too bad. It's sticking pretty well. And now you can just you know, throw a grid on top of this composite. Just reorganize those. You can, if you want to, throw all these into a compound node, since that's you know all one big thing. But I'm going to leave them out so you know I can make a cool thumbnail out of all of the nodes we're going to have. So Alt-S to add a new node. We're going to just do a quick little bit of stuff. We're going to bring gain gamma down some. Increase the contrast a little bit. Increase the saturation just a little bit. And then one fun thing we can do is we can make our sky a different color. So if you want it to go red, we can do that. Let's see, we'll just do the bottom part. We can make it go crazy, you know. I don't even know what this would be. There's a name for this, for that kind of look. You know, radioactive. All sorts of good stuff. I think I'm just going to leave it normal, though. So we got this going. That's looking pretty good. We can maybe warm it up a little bit. Oop, not that much. Calm yourself just a little bit. So that's looking nice. I might add a little bit more contrast to this sky. There we go. Let's shift the hue a bit. I do kind of want to make it a goofier color. So there you go. That's looking fun. That's a nice little thing. So now I've got a nice little primary grade going on there. We'll go ahead and... Add a quick vignette around our lovely subject here. Invert. Did I do that right? Did it invert? Nope. Click that again. So that's cool. I could maybe even add like a little bit of blur just because I like blur a lot. We won't even do a fancy blur. This will just be like a little bit. Like just a, just enough to make people think that we're shooting with a higher aperture than we are. Then Alt L. Gonna see if we can select some of our talent here. We're gonna take this from our original node. Just gonna have a little cleaner stuff to work with. Shift H, that's looking good. We'll bring our lows way down. Okay, that's a little bit goofy, but that'll work. Blur it way out. Shift H, Shift H, just to check. Now, since she stays pretty much in the same part of the frame, I'm not even going to bother tracking this. Well, since we're here, quick save, turn off 3D, and we'll track this guy. Distance is going to be a long tutorial anyway. We might as well do it halfway correct. So now we got that going, and we can add some contrast. Let's find a good frame. She's looking at the camera right there. Nice. Contrast up. Pivot that way. A little more saturation, just so she really pops out. There's a sort of surreal look. And that's pretty nice. Cool. And then if you want to add even more, just a little bit of flavor on top of it, since we're having fun. Ooh, we can just do this in the same chain. We don't need to. That's so. Okay. Well, Resolve's confused about that, so we'll help it out. 
So I'm a little confused about that too. So right click, add one input, click add corrector, take it from here into there. Let's put it up there because this is just a total mess. And we'll add a little LUT on top. So house LUTs, mustamedia.com slash products, check them out. And a fun one is always this one. So do that. And that's pretty cool already. But we're just going to make it a flavor. So we just bring this down some. Now that's pretty neat. So you see it just sort of beefens it up. And there we go. We went from that <laughs> to that. Boy, that'll make a good thumbnail with that comparison. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the Mies Media YouTube channel for even more great tutorials like this. Also, check out MiesNewMedia.com slash products where you can get the LUT that I used here, as well as some other sort of stock footage stuff and power grids, which are even better than LUTs. And I would highly recommend you checking them out. Also, check out links for socials down in the description below. I'm trying to be better about the socials, but... You know, it's more fun to just make tutorials. So anyway, once again, I've been Theo with Mies New Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.